Okay, y'all give me one second here to get set up. And we will start. Okay, um, can, you, can you all hear me okay? I'm not using my usual microphone, so, uh, because I'm actually gonna have to use two cameras today. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. Sometimes the, if I use a different microphone, it doesn't, the sound is not as good. Okay, um, first thing I wanna do is um, answer questions you may have on the worksheet. But any questions on the worksheet? Let's do it. Then. So everything's going okay. Can you do part two, number two, please? Part two, number two. I, I'm, and basically, I want to tell you how you do it, and then really the rest is just taking derivatives. Is that okay? Okay, I just want to make sure I did it right. Okay. So number two, you have z is x to the y. And so what you want to do is you want the uncertainty in Z, and then all you got to do is take the derivative of Z with respect to X, and then multiply by delta X, whatever the uncertainty in X is, plus the derivative of Z with respect to y squared times of y squared. And then if you, for the percent for the percent uncertainty, you're going to take delta z over z. You're going to take this expression, and all you work out. Oh, I forgot times 100%. And if you don't remember how to deal with the differentiation, look it up in your top book. Okay. And then so I just want that expression. What I want this expression and this expression. I mean you it might you might not be able to simplify it that much, but Yes. Yeah. Okay. And the process is the same for every single one. Now, when you have three variables, you'll have a third term here and a third term here. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, cool. Other questions? Trying to get your uh, question in 
you donated the percent, you notated the percent uncertainty you would see with a dash. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and, and in fact, the number, the values you put in the equation are the average values, but that's fine. Right, I mean, when, when you, so, so then when you do the calculation, um, the actual values you put for x and y into this equation are really the uh, average values. So whether you put the, the dash, the, the, the line over it or not, that's fine. But you know, you know what you might want to do just to be clear, just say the dash represents in, in your, in your um, when you write it up, the dash represents average value. Because everybody has different notation for average values. I mean, some people will write this for average value. Some people will write this for average value. It's always good to communicate to the reader what that, that symbol means. Other questions? Okay. And I know, like, the last one, I'm hoping that you've done the last one on, on, on part number two because... Uh, that was that's directly from the uh, Archimedes Principle Lab you, you, did, you did in 205. Okay, 205. Here. Okay. So I want to talk about our next lab. It's really not a lab per se, but you're going to be building something. So the lab is called Experiment 1A, and it's due. On February 14th, yes, due on uh, Valentine's Day. You can you can get it done before that. It, this shouldn't take that. Th this this shouldn't take that long. There's no written report. It's a video report. Okay. So it's basically all video. You're going to create a video. We'll talk about creating the video at the end. Okay. All right. So um, you're going to build two items for me. They're going to be used uh, in the properties of charge lab. So this is basically you're building the equipment for the properties of charge lab. And so there are two pieces of equipment you're going to build. They actually don't take very long to build. One device is called an electrophorus. And it's a device that demonstrates Charging by induction. And there are a lot of videos online on, on this device. Basically, all it is is a metal plate. And a wooden handle. Which is placed usually on top of charged wax. So this is the charged wax. Of course, we're not going to have that. We're going to make some kind of modified version of that. So I'm going to show you my electrophorus. This is it. You guys see it? It's high tech. Okay. What is it? It's a cup. It's a plastic cup, an insulated, it's got to be an insulated cup, that I glued to a paper plate. And then on the paper plate, I wrapped aluminum foil over it. So the paper plate with the aluminum foil is my metal plate. 
And then the wooden handle is my cup. That's it. And this is going to demonstrate, this is going to be used to demonstrate charging by induction. So this shouldn't take for long for you to make this. Okay? You might have to wait for the glue to, I actually, I don't know, I guess I was trying to use up my PVC glue. I used uh, PVC glue because I have, otherwise I'm going to throw it away. Um, so um, I use that. Just you can use regular glue. PVC glue uh, works pretty fast. Now, um, you can also make this uh, um, if you use, instead of using paper plate and aluminum foil, you can use um, cake pan. If you bake cakes and you buy cake pans from Safeway or Nugget or whatever, uh, you can just get one of those cake pans that you, that you uh, buy. Um, they're aluminum. You can glue a, a, cup, a cup to it, or it doesn't have to be a cup, whatever you want to use, okay, as a handle. It's got to be an insulator. Now, I have, I tried the other day to make one out of an old pie plate. So, this is a pie plate from a pie I bought at Nugget. And this one didn't work. And the reason why this doesn't work is because somehow this pie plate seems like it has some sort of coating on it. I, I, I couldn't get it to work as well as this one. And maybe I have to try it again. I don't know. But I couldn't get this to work very well. But if you use the, the cake pan that you would buy, you know, the one that you make, the, the one you bake cakes in, those are all aluminum. They won't have a coating on it. Those would work fine. But this has worked great for me. Okay, so this is your electrophorus. So, first thing you want to build it. When you make a video, I don't need to see you actually making it. I need, I need to see the final, in the video, I need to see the final product, and I need, to sh I need you to show me that it worked. Is that clear? Okay, so I'm going to talk about how, how we show that it works in a little bit, okay? Let me talk about the two pieces of equipment first. The other piece of equipment you're going to build for me is called an electroscope. So electroscope is used to detect charge and qualitatively measure charge. And again, I, in, in, the, in the file for this, I do have links to how to build one, but um, I want to build um, one so that I can show you guys. So last night I built one very quickly. It doesn't take very long. So let me show it to you. Pretty much looks like this. I'll show you a close-up in a second. Basically, it's a jar, it doesn't have to be a jar, but it's got to be clear because you're going to film through this. So it's just a jar, you can use a drinking glass if you want. Um, aluminum foil, which we will use for the leaves, these are called the leaves of the electroscope. Then a conductor, so this has to be metal, and I just use a coat hanger. I cut a coat hanger up and bent it, and then at the and then at the top I just took a piece of aluminum foil and, and made it into a ball, and I got to make sure that the aluminum foil is always touching the metal sheet, the, the metal uh, rod, and then I made a lid. My lid I didn't have a flat paper plate, 
So I used a, a paper bowl. So I suspend my leaf, my leaves, like so, oops, and then I put it inside the jar. The idea of the jar is to isolate the system. Well, that's the electroscope. So let me try to show you a close-up view of it. With a different camera. This is a close-up view. There's a leaf suspended. Let me tilt the camera. I gotta raise this camera a little bit. Is that just aluminum foil that's suspended, or? Yeah, just aluminum foil. Just okay. thin strips. And you can experiment with strips of varying width and length. I found that the longer it is and the thinner it is, it works better. But you can try yourself to see what works for what works best. Um, the you know, these these have been around for like hundreds of years. The original ones. Now, because you want to make them sensitive, the original ones were made out of thin gold foil. Because we don't have thin gold foil. So that aluminum foil that I suspended there um, is, uh, uh, don't use heavy aluminum foil. It'll, it'll never work. It's too thick. That foil that you want to use for those leaves, probably what would, would probably work best is the cheapest aluminum foil you can find. The thinner the aluminum foil, the better. You, typically, if it's cheaper, it's thinner. Okay? And I have Reynolds wrap, so this, this is not... I, I'm sure I can find thinner aluminum foil. All right, and whatever disc kind of aluminum foil you can find, that probably work the best. The thinner, the better. Because then they're lighter. Because what you do... What you do... And let me draw... Let me draw what it looks like. So I, I basically had my hanger, and you don't have to bend it that way, you can bend it like this too. Doesn't matter. So I had my hanger, and then I hang the leaves. And then I put the ball of aluminum. I just crumble it up and put it over it. And then I have my cup, my container, glass container. And then I have a lid. And a student asked in the previous group, why does it have to be inside a container? Uh, why can't it just be out in the open? And it can. The only problem is the leaves are sensitive. So, for example, if I took, if I was trying to, uh, let's say I had this thing and I brought it near the leaves. Just by doing this, it produces a wind and it's going to make the leaves uh, move. So it will give you erroneous results. Okay, that's why, it's, that's why you put the leaves inside the jar. I mean, if, if the leaves were heavy, we, there are versions where the leaves are heavier, it's a different design, um, where the system is actually exposed to the elements, but that one's, that's a little bit different design for this thing. You, you want to have it in a jar or glass or whatever. The container has to be clear because you have to fill, you have to fill everything so that the viewer, me, can see uh, that it works. Okay. So I want to talk about how you test that this works. You want, I want to tell you, uh, I want to talk about how you te uh, test that the electroscope is working. So let me, let me just say what happens. Um, if I take a rod, 
Let me erase some of this stuff. If I take a rod and I charge it, let's, let's say I put a bunch of negative charge on it, we'll all, we're all going to learn that like charges repel. And in a, in a metal, the electrons move very easily. So when I, when I bring a negatively charged rod near the ball of my electroscope, the top end, doesn't have to touch it, just near the top. If I just bring a rod, let me grab my rod. Let me find the rod here. So let me, let's pretend I charged it, and I bring the rod real close to it, close enough so that the ball here is going to feel the influence of the rod. The electrons don't like the electrons in the rod. The electrons in the metal don't like the electrons in the rod. They run away. They run all the way down to where the leaves are. Well, the leaves then, the two sides, they're suspended like this. They both get extra negative charge. We have extra negative charge here, extra negative charge here. These guys don't like each other, and so the leaves spread out. And when you see the leaves spreading out, that tells you you have charge. The more the leaves spread out, the more charge you have. That's why it's qualitative. You don't get a number out of it. Now, the only problem with ours is that we're using... Aluminum foil, which is heavy, ideally you want to use gold foil, which you don't have. Okay. Any questions on that so far? Dane was wondering if we could use a paper clip instead of the hanger. Oh, or would okay. that be too I didn't small? See that in, I'm sorry, I didn't see that in the chat. You can. Somebody, some, in fact, somebody in the previous group asked that. Um, you're probably going to want to use one of the big paper clips. You can try it. And again, uh, or, or actually to be, to be uh, on the safe side, whether I use a hanger or a paper clip, um, Make sure that you sand down the surface. Sometimes, especially with hangers, some of the hangers have a little bit of a coating on them. So make sure you sand them down. You want good contact. Okay. Even if they're not coated, sometimes things like aluminum get oxidized. And that oxide coating could mess you up. So ideally what you would like to do is sand things down. Even this hanger that I used was it was pretty clear that it didn't have a coating, but I sanded it down just in case. So it's possible this, this electrophorus that didn't work for me. It could be that I got an aluminum uh, oxide coating on it. Maybe if I sand it down, it might work better. So yeah, you can use a paper clip. You can use a coat hanger. You can use whatever. You can use wire, you know, electric wire. If you have solid copper electric wire, that's probably the best thing to use. Okay, but you know, that's, um, you might have to take the, the insulation off. You can use that too. You're not limited as to what you can use, but it, but it has to be a conductor. Okay, it has to be a conductor. And you know, I chose putting a, a aluminum, scrunching up aluminum, a uh, piece of aluminum up here because that's the easiest thing to do. But if you want to use something else that's metal and attach it to the to the rod, fine, go for it. Okay? Yeah, you're not limited as to how you build this. You just want to build something that will work for your next lab. So, what I'm going to do is, I want to test this. So my gold leaf fell off, so let me... They might go leaves out of the jar. And you can experiment with different size leaves. I, I, I encourage you to do that. To do that. Just give me a second. My gold leaves, off. no, my aluminum leaves always fall off. 
I want to say cold, but not. Okay. And your job is to make sure that it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge this rod. You're going to get one of these rods in your kit, and you'll also get fur. Your piece of fur will be much nicer than mine, and it'll be much nicer than what you, you, we used last semester. Last semester's fur was terrible. As soon as you started rubbing, fur came, all, came off all everywhere. The students were getting it all full of fur. The one you're getting this semester is, is much better. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge this up by rubbing it, Right now, you probably can't hear anything, but I can hear static charge. And then I'm going to hover it over the ball. So let me, let me change cameras. Let me change the view. Let me move the camera a little bit. Okay, hopefully this will work. Sometimes it doesn't work very well. i got to try it a couple times. Now I'm bringing the rod over. Do you see the leaves move? I bring it in, they move. I bring it out, they go back. And you know, granted, it's not super sensitive. It's not super sensitive because I'm not using gold leaves. And that aluminum foil is a little bit thick. If, if I could find really, really thin aluminum foil, of course, then it becomes more delicate. Um, it will it'll work better. Let me do it one more time. And that worked great. Y'all saw that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So your video has to demonstrate that. Okay. So in your video, I just want to see that device. Maybe not that close up. Or maybe maybe that close up. That's fine. That, that makes it clearer that you can see it work. Okay. Um, I want to see the device, and I want to see that it works. I also want to see you in the video at some point. I want to see your face. Okay. So that I know is, you know, your, your work. Questions on that so far? Okay. Again, make sure for the for the leaves, don't do not use the heavy aluminum foil for the leaves, but for the top of it, you can use, you know, for the ball that you make on top, you can use heavy aluminum foil. That's fine. Okay. All right. Now, how do I demonstrate this? So with the electrophorus, typically what you have, like I, like I said before, you have wax here, and then you have your metal plate, and this is wood, or, or plastic, it's, it's just an insulator, okay? So they, this doesn't conduct electricity, this does. You, we charge the wax. And how do you charge the wax? Basically, you take the fur and you, and you rub it on the wax. You just rub vigorously on the wax. And then you take the electrophorus and put it, pretend this is wax, okay? Let's pretend. You put it on top, then with one finger you put one finger of one hand on the metal part of the plate or the electrophorus, and then with one finger of your other hand, you touch it to a pipe, you touch it to ground. That's going to cause the electron to come from ground onto the metal plate because it's because of the fact that it's near something negatively charged. And so when you pull this up. This will be charged. And so you have to prove that this is charged. Now, I don't have wax here. And you probably don't have wax, a flat piece of wax. 
Maybe you have a flat piece of rubber, that would be fine. If you have a flat, a flat piece of rubber, and you rub it with the fur, that's going to work great. Well, not all of us have that either. You might have a styrofoam plate. You can use a styrofoam plate. And I, and, and I don't have a styrofoam plate. But I do have a styrofoam cooler. Okay, so I have a styrofoam cooler. So this will serve as my wax surface. Now, I'm, in, I'm not in the garage, and I'm not near a faucet right now. I, I'm not near a location where I can, can touch a pipe that's grounded. But I'm going to pretend I am. I have a light bulb. I have a, a lamp. You guys can see the lamp? At least the top of it. Yes. I'm going to use this. I'm going to pretend this is my, my grounding thing. Okay. What, uh, I'm sorry, somebody said something? Oh, I just said yes, because you asked me if we could do the link. So, what I'm going to do to prove that this works is I'm going to charge this up, and I'm going to bring it near a piece of aluminum foil. And if the foil deflects, then I know it's charged. And, look, sometimes this doesn't work on the first try. You might have to try it a couple times. Well, let's see. Let's give it a go. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to rub my wax. Okay, it's not my wax, but it's my styrofoam. It's got to be a flat surface. So if, you, if, if this doesn't work, use a styrofoam plate. I'm going to take this and put it on the styrofoam container, and then one finger on the lamp, one finger on the electrophorus, and then I'm going to pick up my aluminum foil, I'm going to see if it, it feels the effects. Do you see it getting attracted? Do you see aluminum foil uh, deflecting? Can you see that? In fact, one thing, let me change the microphones real quick. Because I want you to hear it. You can actually hear it charging. Just one second. I'm going to unplug one of my cameras and plug in my microphone. So let me try it again. My piece of fur is really bad, it's small. Okay. Okay, so I picked this up. Let's see if you can hear this. Did you hear anything? Yeah. It, that, that, one was, that one wasn't went very good. When I did it earlier, it, it, was, it was louder. Let me do it one more time. Did you hear that tick? Or was it wasn't loud enough? Okay, good. I heard it. You heard it? Okay, good. So that tells you right away it's charged. If you can pick it up and you hear the sound, then you know you know it's working. Okay? So um, in the video, how are you gonna demonstrate it? I would. Uh, after, after demonstrating the electrophorus works with the, I'm sorry, after demonstrating the electro, electroscope works with the rod, why don't you just bring this next to the electroscope? This thing charges better than the rod. If you bring this uh, next to the electroscope, 
the leaves will dramatically separate. Okay? So, there's multiple ways for you to show that this works. One, hold up a piece of foil and bring the electroscope near the foil and show that the, electro, uh, the foil deflects. Or two, bring it next to your working electroscope and show that the leaves separate. Now, and I haven't tried this because I don't have, I haven't tried it with this, because I don't have a short enough fluorescent bulb. But if you charge this well, and you take a fluorescent bulb, and you bring the end of the fluorescent bulb, and touch the electroscope, if, it, if the bulb flickers, you know it works. But in order for you to show the flicker, you might have to turn the lights off in the room. So when we do this lab on, cam on campus, that's what you do. You take a light bulb and you bring it and touch the electroscope and you see the light bulb flash. But you have to darken the room. And it even works better if you ground one side of the um, fluorescent bulb. If you, if you ground one side of the fluorescent bulb and then you bring this towards bring this electroscope towards the fluorescent bulb and touch it, it'll, you'll get a better, a better flash. Yeah, that's right. That's from static electricity. So you can, you can try it. You can test it with this thing. Okay, I'm sorry, Kai, I missed your question. So you touch the electrophorus. So, so let me, when let me go over... ground, like when we touch the grounding rod, are we touching the electrophorus at the same time, or are we touching the styrofoam at the same time? You're touching the electrophorus. So, and it's hard for me to do to demonstrate. So let me let me. Um, it's hard to do this on camera. So I would do this. So let me let me try it this way. My, can you see my thumb? I would touch my thumb here on the metal, and then uh, the pipe at the same time. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Okay. And then and then when I and then I'll pick it up and, and I want to show that it's charged. So let me say something about this. Last semester when um, I had the students do this, a lot of the students watch videos. Um, that talk about the electrophorus. There's a lot of videos online about how these work. So in some of the videos, what they do to say it's charged is, is this. They, they rub the wax, they, they actually use wax. They rub it, they put this on top, and then they touch it. And anytime you touch it, it'll make a spark. It'll make a, you, you can feel the, you can hear the sound. Okay. That doesn't prove that this thing is charged. That just, pro that just proves you have charge within the system. What you want to do is you want to be able to lift this up and prove to me that by itself, this has charge on it. So you want to lift it up after you've touched ground and touched the electro electrophorus, bring it near aluminum foil and see if it's still charged and see if it gets deflected. Or use a fluorescent bulb or use the electroscope. Okay, you have to be able to pick this up and show that you've isolated the charge on here. The videos, the people in the video a lot of times will just say, oh, I'll touch it and it's charged. Well, no, this is not charged. You haven't shown me that this piece itself is, is charged. All you've, all you've said is that there's charge in the system consisting of the plate and the wax. I want you to be able to lift this up and show that there's charge on it. Okay? Does that make sense? And you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about when you see the videos. Okay. And in fact, it works better when you pick it up because you actually, you've actually, by lifting it up, you've done work on the system. Okay. Um, other questions? I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, everything that you do, you want to make sure that it can be easily filmed. Right? You want to be able to easily film everything. 
So how are you going to uh, you make the film? Well, you use your webcam or whatever camera you have to film it. I did, I, and I, I need to see you in the video, okay? I, I do need to see, see you in the video. Somebody asked, do I have to talk in this video? For this particular video, since you're not really explaining anything, since you're just demonstrating, you really don't need to talk in the video. But the following lab is you demonstrating properties of charge. You're going to demonstrate a phenomenon and explain it. So the following video, you're going to be explaining stuff. Okay. So let me talk about the videos. I don't want to download your videos. Okay. I don't want to download, I don't want you to uh, upload them on Canvas and have me download them. Um, that takes a long time. I, I had videos last semester, you know, they were 40 minutes long. And the reason it was 40 minutes long is because the student didn't try everything ahead of time. The student just said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my lab now and I'm going to videotape everything I've done. Instead of trying everything first, making sure that it works, and then filming it, the student just did everything on the fly. And so the video was not, it was not very good. I got to see all the problems the student was having, etc. Okay. So um, just build it, make it work, and then film it. Film that it works. That's it. The video should, will be short. The video will be, you know, a couple of minutes long instead of 40 minutes long. Okay, I don't, I, I'm trying to avoid you to film something for 40 minutes. That's a huge file. Okay. So let me show you YouTube. Now, the film that you make, I want you to upload it to YouTube. By the way, it doesn't have to be YouTube. It could be any other service. But YouTube is, is um, the easiest because it's free. I think Vimeo, I think it's Vimeo, I, I forgot what the other service is. They give you free up to 500 megabytes and then after that they charge you. And yeah, and you can use Studio. I'll say, Michaela, I'll say something about Studio in a, in a, in a minute. I'm just giving, I'm, I'm just giving you an options. I, I just don't want to, um, I, I, I don't want to, um, be downloading your videos. Okay, so I'm trying to find my, my, my video channel, my YouTube channel. Okay, let me switch. Views here, one second. Okay, um, I have, like I said, I have my own YouTube channel. It's basically for my classes. So I'm going to click on this YouTube channel, which I created. So you go to YouTube, you create an account, and you create your own channel. And these are all, the, and this has all the videos from, even from last, from spring of 2020 that I had to make because we went online. Okay. And the video lectures, I mean, they're tailored to the, to the class, so they're not really general lectures. So you create your, you create your channel, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then you want to upload a video. So you go up here, and you click Upload Video. I don't know why it's so slow. And then I'm going to I'm going to upload a video. I'm just going to drag a video to there. Hold on a second. I, I, I'm working between two screens. OK, so let's say I drag this video here.
And then I enter some information. Uh, this is uh, physics 210L um, 810. And I, I'm just putting today's date. So what is today's date? Uh, okay. And then I have a playlist, so I'm going to put it in a play, my, my playlist for Physics 210L. And then you want to say, yes, it's for kids. Otherwise, it, it becomes complicated if you say no. And then the next thing I do is I say, I, I choose whether I want to be private or unlisted or public. So in your case, um, most likely, most of you are going to want to be unlisted. And so if you make it unlisted, the only person who can see it is you and, and the person who has your link. So... You probably want to make it unlisted unless you want to, you have your own channel already and want to make it public. It's up to you. But for my case, because this is the lab for A10, I'm going to make it public. And I'm going to publish it. And the link is right there. You, you, you all see the link. There's the link right there. So once it's uploaded, you want to send me the link. You want Actually, don't email me the link. You want to upload the link. When you do a submission into Canvas, so just create a Word document copy and paste the link into the Word document, and that's it. And then, I'm sorry, copy and paste the, the link into the Word document, and then upload that Word document into the assignment. And then when I go grade the lab, all I got to do is click on the link and watch your video. Okay? That's all you need to do. Now, this takes a while. Like, this, this file is really big, so it's going to take several hours. Because YouTube not only uploads it, it has to process it. Okay? I'm, I'm hoping the, the video that you make is less than five minutes. Okay? That's what I'm hoping. It should be. By the way, it doesn't, you don't have to make a single video. You can make multiple videos. It's up to you. You don't, you're not forced to make one single video. Some students are good with the, with the um, video editing. They will make two videos and then join them together into one. That's fine. All I'm looking for is that you built the device and that you showed me that it works. That's all. Okay? Now, let me go into... Canvas. I'm going to go into a student view. Luckily, I have a student view available. And um, when I'm on the side here, there's this button. Oh, actually, let me go into the student view. Sorry, I didn't go to the student view. So this is what you guys see, right? There's a button on the left called Studio. At least when you're on the computer, if you're doing this on your phone, it'll, it'll look differently. But there's a button here called Studio right below the inbox. I click on it. And Canvas Studio will allow you to make films and edit them. So all you got to do is click Record. Of course, you got to be able to uh, you got to allow Canvas to use your video, but you click the record button and you can record your video and then share your video with me. So Michaela, you've done this before? Because you've asked, you asked about studio. And so yeah. I just... Okay. So yeah, so... Um, you can use studio. You can use Canvas Studio if you want. That'll save you from uploading the video onto YouTube. Of course, the, if these videos that you're going to be making, at least for this one, is not going to be long. So uploading to YouTube, won't, if you use YouTube, won't won't take that long. 
Um, when I upload my lectures, since they're an hour and a half, those take a long time because those files are 10 gigabytes. Okay, yours, yours won't be that way. Oh, by the way, um, if you use a PC, the files are actually smaller. Questions? Or concerns? Anything unclear? Remember that Tyler, our instructional assistant, has hours on Thursday, so he can answer your questions you may have on this lab. This is due on the 14th, so you have a little bit of time to do this lab. Okay, I'm going to leave the student view. And go back. Okay. So let me uh, talk about the grading rubric. The grading rubric is listed in the lab itself. And if you go to the, the assignment link on Canvas, if you go to the assignment link on Canvas, um, you'll see the rubric there. The only thing you need to upload for this assignment is a document with a link to your video. I just need a link to your video, that's it. Don't email it to me, submit it on there, because when I, what I do is, I, there's a, a grading device, there's a grading, uh, something called speed grader, so I just run the speed grader, your assignment will be there, all I gotta do is click the link, watch the video, and then enter the grade. But let me, let me give you my rubric for this. And I had to put a rubric just so it's clear what I'm looking for. And, and this is in your, the document that goes along with this experiment. This document is on Canvas. If you go to the module for weeks two through four, you will see this document there. Okay, so here's my rubric. And, and I'm just gonna copy it directly from the file. So number one, did the student And this is four points. The whole lab is worth 20 points. So I have five, five things I'm grading on. So that you upload it. To, if you're going to make me download your video, I'm, you're going to lose uh, points for that. Number two, did the student build electrophorus? Sorry, I gotta press hard. That's four points. Um, did the student clearly demonstrate? Let me know if you can't see this. Okay, I'm not gonna keep writing four, every, every single one here is four points. Did the student build electroscope?
with clear container. And then number five, do the electroscope work. Most people on this lab get really good grades because you just got to get it to work. I think last semester maybe I had one person who um, didn't, get, didn't get it to work at all. Your job is to make this work, okay? One of the things, and sometimes students will, will email me and say, it doesn't work. It's like, well, what did you try? Try different things, okay? If you don't have fur, for example, to charge things up, you can use wool. Okay, you can always use wool. This will come with your lab kit, by the way. Um, but if you want to get ahead of the game, you can try uh, wool, uh, any wool you have at home. Okay, I, I think this, this first lab could be done with everything you have at home. I need to see that the electroscope works with the PVC. I need to see that the electroscope works when you bring the PVC rod near the top because the lab that you're going to do the following week is going to require you to use this. So I need to see that. Okay? Questions? Concerns? Is everything clear? I think so. Okay, I just want to make sure that everything's clear. I, I uh, you know, I'm trying to, you know, because I did this last semester, and I'm trying to, you know, I, I saw what things work and didn't work last semester. Um, the one thing that um, really was. The, the one thing that was bothersome last semester is students didn't use jars that work very clear. So it's hard to see whether the leaves moved. Okay, so, so now I'm, you know, so now that, that you see this in the, uh, I'm sorry, this, now you see this in the rubric, I need to be able to clearly see that things work. Okay, and again, you're going to be using this for the next, the next lab. So, um, that's why they have to work. You gotta, you gotta make things work. Sometimes they take more than one try. And as an engineer, that's gonna be your job, right? Most of you folks are, are engineering majors. And you, you gotta make something work, right, for your job. So same thing here. Except that these, these things are a little bit easier to work with than what you're gonna be doing in your, in your careers. Okay, so if there's no questions, I'm gonna end it here. Uh, can I ask you a question unrelated to the lab? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So I'm not going to be able to make the uh, lecture today, and I know that you were going to use it to at least partially answer questions related to the material. I sent you a, a message on Canvas about potentially scheduling like a time on Zoom that we could meet for like uh, talking. Is that possible? If not, I understand. Well, so so the the lecture will be videotaped, so that's one thing. Um, right. I'm I'm going to try to schedule ours Monday night. I'm going to try to schedule some office, some uh, student help hours because right before the exam. But if you want to, I mean, I didn't see your email this morning, I guess, because I. Uh, I literally just sent it before the lab started, so don't worry. Okay, so if we need, if if that Monday night time doesn't work, we can schedule something else. Monday Monday night works perfectly for me. Okay, I, I will I will let you know the time. Because I have a meeting till 5.30 on Monday. It would have to be after that. Okay, no worries. Okay. Thank you. All right. Other questions? I have sort of a dumb question, just real quick. Go ahead. Um, it's on the lab review sheet due tonight. Okay. So for... Um, Percentage uncertainty, do you just divide the whole propagation by the mean? 
Yeah, so let me, let me, um, or, well, you, you're doing, you're, you're, you're writing, you're going to be dividing by the function, right? Okay. So let's say, I'll make one up, okay, as an example. Suppose that I have, okay, this one's done. Suppose I have area is length times width, okay? And if you do the calculation, you'll find that delta A is this. Um, Now, if you want to calculate delta A over A times 100%, I know I did this quick, but then what you want to do is take this thing in the numerator, divided by L times W times 100%. I actually can simplify this. So I'm going to put this under the square root. And now simplify it. And what I'll get is this. That's my answer. That, does that uh, make sense? Yeah, okay, so we would just set on the other side um, uncertainty of A over A times percent 100, so we'd have that on the left-hand side? Yeah, yeah, this, that's what you want. Okay. Delta A over okay. A. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this, you see this come out often when this function depends on products of two two or more variables. If this was squared or something, then it wouldn't, you would have a number, some sort of number here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Other questions? Okay, so we'll end it here and we'll meet at two o'clock, okay? We'll see you then. Thank you, Professor. You're welcome.